what's going on everyone RC84 here like always thanks for watching my friends welcome to the first video of the overhaul on the Axel SDX 10 2 now this is going to be on installing the shocks and I want to talk about these shocks that I have here my friends I have here these uh, hot racing black internal spring air shocks that are 100 millimeters uh, comes in a pair and also comes with the uh, springs and the mounting hardware which we'll take a little closer look of that in just a minute but uh, they seem to be pretty cool little shocks. I mean, uh, internal, so there's like no type of oil involved, which is pretty cool to me, you know. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get the bag open, talk about what is all in here. All right, my friends, so unpackaged, here's what you get. You get both the shocks, and these are really nice shocks. They're actually all made of uh, metal which is really nice on that feature. Uh, of course, it's got the Hot Racing logo on it right there. Uh, pretty nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah. All right, so what else you get is that you get three different springs to, to go into the shock. So you get kind of like, I want to say this is a kind of a stiffer spring, a more firmer spring, and then a softer spring, which uh, honestly, the, uh, the the black ones actually come inside of the tubes already installed, which they feel like pretty good to be on the crawler. So I'm probably going to use those. Now, also, you get eight of these little O-ring uh <laughs> O-rings, uh, rubber O-rings. Uh, you get uh, four nuts, four screws, uh, some four spacers, another four spacers, and then you get your joints, which mount onto uh, the shocks. And I've already gone ahead and done two of them just to kind of show you exactly how it looks like. So, yeah. Now, I'm also going to show you a modification that I came across of uh, from Matt from uh, RC Overload did a great tutorial on these uh, on these shocks because there's no instructions whatsoever uh, with these shocks. They just kind of like give it to you and it's like, oh, you got to figure it out. So uh, Matt from RC Overload did a great tutorial video on uh, on how to uh, install these shocks and he gave me a good tip. Well, I gave everybody a good tip on how to make these shocks uh, perform a lot better than uh, than as the stock ones. So there's a little bit of delay right there. As you see, it's kind of a little bit of delay. Now, with the modification I already made to the ones I've already done, you see here, a lot better. More quicker return versus just a regular one, which is takes a little bit of time to get out but yeah <laughs> all right so yeah so that's all it comes in the kit now let's talk about what tools we're going to use on this project all right so here's the tools i'm going to be using i'm going to use a uh, 5x64 uh, hex screw uh, screwdriver <laughs> then uh use my uh tire ring here to get the tires off now you're probably asking all right what's the flathead drill bit and the drill here for well i'm gonna show you a really cool technique that i came across well i came up with because like you know doing this right here on your tires kind of gets hectic and so i wanted to come up with a way of actually making it a little bit more easier so by taking my electric drill here which is a drill master 4.4.8 uh, volt cordless screwdriver got this at uh harbor freight for like 10 bucks and it works great f for doing the rc builds so all i'm gonna do take the flat head put it in there and then stick the small end of the wrench here into the flat head and I have me an automatic tire gun. So that way I can actually just put it on here and just pull the tires off with no problem. Don't have to sit there and do the whole uh, motion bit. <laughs> and you see the bit is stuck in there. So yeah, just makes it a little more easier. So just a little tip for you guys uh, if you hate taking off your wheels uh, by hand. So that just makes it easier. So that's some of the tools we're gonna use. So let's go ahead and get into the whole putting together of the shocks, all right? All right, so I got everything laid out that we're gonna use. Well, there's a few things we're not gonna use. First off, we're not gonna use the four nuts. So we can put those aside. We're not gonna uh, use the four screws. And we're not gonna use these uh, kind of big little spacers here. We're not gonna use those because you really don't need it 
uh, on it because we're actually going to use uh, the stock screws and stuff off of the original shock steer. Okay, now I want to show you how to improve these shocks a lot better than what they come from uh, from the uh, from the factory here. Now, as you can see here, kind of has a really slow delay. All right, so uh, to pr actually you know, to make that better so it can actually pop out quicker because that's what you want. You want it to pop out a lot quicker, faster response to it. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it. First, you want to remove this top here. And it is removable. That's where you put your the springs at. There's also a little O-ring right there, as you guys can see, if the camera would focus. <laughs> sometimes my camera wants to focus, and sometimes it just does not want to focus. <laughs> but yeah, all right. So yeah. Now the next thing is that there, this part here actually unscrews as well. So we're going to unscrew this. All right. Like so. Eventually it comes off. Okay. So there is a, uh, a little. There we go. There's a little cover here, a little plastic cover. Now we're going to remove that part right so. All right. So actually we're going to push this pin down a little bit and we're going to remove this top, all right? Now inside you have two of these little rubber O-rings. Now you're actually going to remove one of those O-rings. Uh, so don't move the second one. And I will say that uh, <laughs> if you remove both of them, you're going to have a hard time getting them, uh, getting them back in there after they come out. They do not want to go back into uh, the piston shaft here. So you got to be careful on this part right here. So yeah, so we got the other end coming out. All right. So we're going to pull it out just like so. And it fell out, but it's okay. That's not a problem. We're just going to push it back up there a little bit. So we're going to remove one of those O-rings. I'm taking this little small hex driver here and just kind of putting it in there. Pull it out. So there it is. All right. So we're going to put that to the side. We don't need that right now. Or we don't need it at all. So we're going to put that in there. Now uh, you want to take your little plastic cover and you want to put it back on. Push your shock up. Like so, get your cap, put the cap back on. All right, then we want to load our spring, which I'm using the black springs, as you see here. If you can see it, see it? Ah, uh, <laughs> well, you see it. All right, so we're going to put it in there, put the top on, and Screw it down. And there you go. So now it is, we got a faster delay. Now he did mention in the video that you probably want to take some WD-40 and uh, spray inside the cylinder. Not too much, but just a little bit to kind of give it a little, a little bit of lubrication, which I'll do that, uh, you know, off the camera, of course, but yeah. So yeah, works out good now, all right? So now how do you install the rest of it, all right? Well, I'm gonna show you that too. Okay, so we have these two little joint balls here. Uh, so we got a small one and a large one, all right? Well, the small one, or no, actually the large one is gonna go here on the top. Then you take these little rubber uh, O-rings and you slap one on this side, like so. It always works better when I'm off the camera doing this versus being in front of the camera. Cause then like, I was like, okay, I can't do this. <laughs> but yeah, all right. Well, if I can get it on there, it's a little tricky sometimes, but I got it on there. So we're gonna take our next one, put it on like so. And I hope you guys can see this. Sometimes my camera's not the quickest at, uh, at focusing because I am using my DSR camera for this. I usually use my JVC Evron camcorder but the sound quality on the Canon is a lot better versus that one. Alright, now we're going to take the small one, 
put it in there here like so as well. And just do the same thing as you did with the top one. Put it in there. Put this, put the little rubber O-ring on there, and then boom. And again. Alright, and there. Now, you're probably saying, alright, what's these other little spacer links? Well, that's to go over right here. So, let's, uh, let me show you. So, with your screw, you put it in this little spacer thing. And, uh, yeah, it's just like that. <laughs> if you guys can see that, alright? And we'll try to focus at the camera. Focus. Let's, uh, let's do a manual focus because sometimes this thing does not. There you go, alright? So, yeah better view on that <laughs> so yeah so uh, all you gonna do is just put it in there like so boom take your other one and just stick it on the other side and so yeah it's like that and then of course you screw it into the uh, where your shot goes so yeah now I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of these and then uh, we'll install them onto the vehicle. So, all right, so I'll be with you guys in just a minute. So, let's start removing the tires. First, we're going to take these little black caps off that it comes on the uh, SCX10 there. And then we got our wheel nut right there. So, we're going to take the screwdriver, uh, uh, put our my little homemade bit thing in there, and then just Boom. Look how easy that was, my friends. Didn't have to do much whatsoever to pull it off. That was a pretty cool trick. So let's go ahead and get the uh, shock installed. But I want to also take a look at the uh, stock shock versus the aftermarket shock. So we'll take a look at those in a little bit. So let's go ahead and get the rest off, all right? All right, my friends, so let's take a look at both of these shocks here. This is the stock one off the SDX-10, and this is the aftermarket one. A lot of difference here. You can see more cleaner design, more kind of cheapest kind of look to it. Not saying that these are cheap. They're pretty good. Now, look at just the size difference. A little bit bigger, a lot taller shock. So, boom. All right, let's do, let's do a way where I can actually show you guys without having my fingers all in the way here. So let's use, look at this. So we have probably another inch or so right there. I want to say probably an inch more of, uh, of your uh, shock uh, rod here. So uh, big difference on that. So that's definitely going to help me out there in the trails and, and flexibility. Now, I'm anxious to see which is the better shot, the aftermarket one or the stock shot. Uh, how will it perform? Which, when you, I'll do a video on that showing the flexibility and stuff and seeing if it's going to be good or not. Uh, yeah, all right. So let's get back into installing them onto the truck. Well, my friends, finally finished installing the shocks on the SCX-10. Took a little longer than I expected to get it on there, but you know, some of my tools were not working right, like some of my hex keys here were not working right, so I had to go back to the old school of these little things right here, these little suckers. <laughs> uh, so it took a little time to put it on. Now I, uh, I did end up using some of the hardware that came with the kit, some of the spacers I used uh, mostly on the top here. I didn't use any on the bottom because I really couldn't get down in there to actually put any spacers on it, but other than that, it still works great. Um, now, as you can see, the flexibility, my friends, gained a lot of flexibility right there. Uh, right at, uh, I wanna say at the bottom of this tire, of the uh, tire on the SCX-10, we're looking at about five inches. That's the five inches of, of, of clearance ability right there. And I'm fully maxed out on the back, and uh, I got some more I can flex in the front. Well, no, actually, that's maxed out right there. So, as you can see, crazy. That much flex is 
there. Uh, gained in height, I gained about a little about an inch and uh, an inch and a, inch and a quarter of actually clearance uh, underneath the chassis itself. So yeah, so as you can see, lot of clearance ability. So I can actually call you know you know crawl over a small uh, log or, or, or branch or whatever you know whatever I come across, I'll have the clearance ability there. So yeah. But uh, it turned out nice. Now I did have one problem, and that's with the uh, here on the front shocks. Uh, when I got down to the last one, I was noticing that the driver's side shock was kind of bowed in, and the rest of the shocks were just straight, like it was like from the factory. And I was like, "Well, what's going on with this? Uh, you know, what's the deal?" Uh, I tried to, you know, kind of add some spacers to it to see if I could straighten it up. Um, but it's like, okay, I did that, so I had to do it to do all the other ones. Uh, they turned out pretty good, but now the draw, uh, the passenger side is having a little issue. Uh, but I mean, it's still straight up and down, looks fine. But it's just. Uh, you know, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it has to do something with the uh, suspension arm right here. I don't know. Uh, if you guys uh, want to comment down below and let me know what you guys might think, what is the deal? Uh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. Uh, just uh, comment down below. Let me know. All right. Um, but yeah. So that's <laughs> that's it, my friends. Uh, it's yeah, so crazy. Now, uh, in the next upcoming video on the build or on the project here is to install these nice big pair of Super Swamper TSLs. Uh, these are yeah XLs, which is the large version, kind of like this tire. But we're gonna find out how beefier and how bigger this tire is. Uh, so that's going to be the next up upcoming video, installing these onto the rims and tires, installing it onto the truck, and uh, yeah. So, yeah, so my friends, a lot, <laughs> a lot to do here. Well, I think I'm going to let you guys go, and I'll see you in the next upcoming video of the overhaul on the Axial SDX-10 II. I'll see you later.